You're very welcome back to the final leg of the Daily Rundown. Now, this is the part of the show where we have a look at slightly more unusual stories that have been making the news. And just to make sure it's fresh for all of us, I haven't even seen these ones. So if anyone is to blame, we'll blame our producer, Emmy. That's to blame for them not being interesting. We blame her for everything. Well, yeah, it's so we easy do. because she's not yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Pollution, she climate change, it's all Emmy's fault. Yeah, Andy yeah. Murray. <laughs> she's, always there. she's always at him as well. Right, let's go into the first one. A new wine has been launched that hopes to lure in new drinkers. And it's bright blue. Wow, the tipple is a blend of red and white wine. Now, hang on a second. I'm pretty sure red and white doesn't make blue. It pink, doesn't. pink at best. Yeah, let's read on, let's read on. And it's aimed at younger non-wine drinkers who might be put off by wine snobbery. After finding success inside Spain, Gick. is launching in the rest of Europe this summer. And here's what it may look like. That is an unfortunate name. Gick. G-I-K. There you go. Gick. That's wow, it's definitely blue. Why, why would that... Inc- that's that's like, antifreeze. That's, that's what you put down the toilet. <laughs> oh my goodness. Would you drink that? It depends what it tastes like, but I'd wonder where the blue is coming from, at least with white or red. You know, it's coming from the original source, the grapes and the, 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 the skin. Being What's been added to that? You won't be drinking that. It's yeah. like wicked. I don't really like something that, yeah, I don't really like something that has that kind of crazy synthetic colour. Yeah. I, in any In any kind of capacity. I don't like those. They didn't ever like any of those Alco Pops. Wine's been around for centuries. Why are they doing this to wine? And it's made of grapes. That's, you know, yeah. I like to pretend it's kind of healthy. Isn't that what rose is for? Yes, yes. It might actually be one of your five a day. It yeah. might be one of my five a day, Ian. Exactly. That's the way I like to think of it. When you're having that kind of neon blue. But let me say, yeah. I mean, I, we probably haven't, I probably haven't pronounced it right. But Gick. it's G-I, it's G-I-K. Gick. What would you say? Either, I, there's nothing that's going to make that sound better. No, that word is not great. In Ireland, that's a slang. Um, for poo. <laughs> I mean, the slang for poo. You Everything's know, slang for poo over there. For <laughs> so, yeah, that's very unfortunate. Definitely. I imagine they're not going to try and uh, market it there in Ireland under that name. Anyway, yeah. do you, you have, have to a glass of blue wine in? Blue wine, no. No. I remember Blue Nun. Do you remember? <laughs> I remember Mad, mad Dog 2020 with some mad colours. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Thunderbird. Oh, Lord. I was a student. What, what Thunderbird these? wine. Oh. It was like Thunder, Thunderbird tasted horrible for the first bottle, which is why you always had to. It's like cough mixture for a while, and then you just it, warm yeah, to it. I like how you pushed all the way through to the end of the first bottle, though, just to, just to yeah. kind of make sure. You've got to give it a chance. I was just find that out I the was first a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the thing, to be fair, it is, it is marketed at uh, younger wine drinkers. Isn't that what Rosé is for? Is it? My mum drinks rosé. I would have Younger wine drink. Or is that what rosé is for? Well, it's sort of like... Red seems big and heavy and white. Yeah. And white's quite acidic and, and along the other side. So rosé's somewhere in the middle. So sweeter Rosie. and more palatable. I think the um, red... I, or I always feel like red is the adult wine. I, I, I'd, I'd love to be able to drink red wine. I feel like it's very um, elegant and... You don't drink you, it? You look very intelligent. No, it tastes horrible, Drew. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I do like a bit of red wine. It's, and it's very good for you, all the tannins. Is it so? Oh, yeah. One glass. Well, it is this week. Next week, they'll have brought out... Yeah, there'll have something else to be bad, bad for you next week. You know, like cheesy warts. It just could be anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at our next story then. Uh, well, we're not promoting excess drinking. However, we do have another wine story that's caught our <laughs> eye. Uh, feline wine for cats has gone on sale. The creator said the project had started as a joke, but he gradually realized there could be a genuine demand from owners who want to sit down <laughs> and share a drink with their pets. His <laughs> Apollo Peak wines use beetroot to get a genuine looking red color, but no alcohol. There are two varieties, a red named Pinot Miao and a white called Moscato. That's okay. the true meaning of catnip, isn't it? Beetroot stains awfully. I wonder if beetroot even good for cats either. I mean, so I, I feel like it's not. I worry that people would sit that down. There's a lot think is healthy that's not good for animals. Why would people want to sit down and have a drink with their cat? I worry more about those people existing in society today <laughs> with a straight jacket or a... tranquilizer dart people want to do stuff for their animals so oh, they, they, no, there's pet magazines you know people are people are into this some people put their cats through college i mean it's ridiculous it's getting out of <laughs> I hand i think someone's now. married their cat i'm pretty sure we covered it in here somebody's married their cat oh do you have lord pets? i'd love a dog but i can't because i live in a flat I, not yeah a not allowed them into my place either are yeah. you not fans of cats i, I love cats cat. but i'm allergic no to them, so. they smell oh. they, they try and smother you in the night they try to smother you oh yeah I I've said this before, it. it's been statistically proven no. if, if an owner dies and they have a dog, the dog will lay down at their feet and wait two weeks, either die with them or they'll wait two weeks before they start to eat them on their toes. A cat wait half an hour and start in your face. Cats are <laughs> this evil. This is true. This is true. As long as what's, what's the science behind it? I think that they want the heat, don't they? They want the heat of your breathing. 
I've no idea. Mike, I, Mike, I was Cats never. Cats are evil. Cats. You're and you're proper anti-cat. Person. I don't. My, they're okay, but I, yeah, I, I do worry about people that are that like their cats as much as people do. Do you feel like you don't like cat people then? I wouldn't say that. It's, people, it's dog more... and cat people are set against each other, though, aren't they? I have one of each, by the way. I know. I don't know what it is. I just do, people that like dogs like dogs. People like cats really like cats. It's kind of slightly creepy. Do you think it's very yeah. crazy they're cat just lady. associated with like yeah well that's that's the worst one isn't it what 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 qualifies as a crazy cat lady or two uh, how many more than two <laughs> I was going to say five oh right. I'm quite generous, generous. I'd say well, five someone who's I'm, marrying their cat I'm, would be quite a good example I'd have thought I'm pretty sure I know someone with four so I have to say five or else she'll hit they have me. little kitty bridesmaids and a little <laughs> kind of cat train at the back. <laughs> This is, oh, you know, we have access to all this. I don't know if it's because we're, you know, people just want stuff to go viral, but someone married their cat. I'm going to have to find somebody, find, get James to look somebody at Somebody married their caravan, happened. I believe, as well. Their car. Caravan. Oh, their caravan. Well, that's can, worse. Who can well, marry anything Tracy Emin just marry a rock? Did Probably. she? She married a rock. A, a, not a rock. An actual car. rock. Like a piece of stone. Yeah, piece of stone. I'm very fond of this table, but I'm not going to marry <laughs> <laughs> but cat wine anyway, no, yay or nay? Uh, no, that's we'll just silly. seems silly. You imagine them rolling out of pubs after closing time, you'd be cats on the Fighting. rampage. Oh, yeah, you know. And the other stuff that they get up to at night and they make noise. They don't need any ha- help with the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to go on whether we like it or no. Right, we're sticking with... Drink uh, safely, cats. Drink, <laughs> res- drink responsibly, cats, okay? We're sticking with animals, but I think we've, we've, we're finished with the wine stories now. A petition to save grey squirrel has reached over 2,000 signatures. This was after pest controllers were called because animal, an animal hid nuts in pot plants. Residents labelled the animal, which they've called Cyril, part of the community, and often and said that he often comes into the office to entertain and de-stress workers. And we have a little picture of Cyril. His life hangs in the balance as we speak. Let's have a look. Oh, would you look? And he's posed very, very cute. You're not impressed. He's probably they're stuffed. Just, he looks like they're stuffed him. They're just cute rats. Are they? Yeah, but but I, like, cute. I like them. They make the, they make the city fun. But um, my mum lives up in Cumbria, and in Cumbria we have reds. Really? And they're, um, they're, they're very slowly coming back. Are they? Which are the, go- which the, are the good ones? The reds red, are the good red ones? Red ones. Greys it's are not, the it's not good dodgy bad. ones. Reds, reds are the ones that were here originally. Right. Greys are the nasty incomers. Right, okay. Well, Greys are the one you keep wanting rid of. Does, it, does Greys... <laughs> they didn't actually like, kill red squirrels, though, did they? They just ate all their food. It's not that they kill them. They're bigger, and they take over the space, and I believe they carried a, they, they carried a disease that wasn't fatal to them as often as it was to the reds. Okay. And they came in, and they took over slowly and kicked the uh, reds out, but there's bits of Cumbria where reds are making a comeback. Yeah, so you go with quite a few in Scotland as well. They have little nature reserves. I think that's where they that. are. Yeah. yeah, I think I've, I've watched programs about. I've them. seen one in my mum's back garden. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. I, didn't, I thought that you couldn't really see them anymore. I thought that they were mostly in reserves and stuff like that. But so, how are they coming back? Is there, is this, this a plan? A, a, a I there? think there's a small. There's protected areas, yeah. and I think there may be a small amount of culling of greys, and they are further from cities. I think greys like the cities, right? More. I, I don't know. I mean, they like they like the hooch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they come in for the for the There's booze, like the cat, stealing the cat yeah, wine, blue wine, the cat wine, yeah, yeah. Wine that the cats are being, yeah, together, it's all going on. <laughs> Do you know? They're, they're, I mean, I know you said the cute rats. I think squirrels are gorgeous. I used to live in um, I used to live in Richmond, just outside London, and we we go we go to Richmond Park quite a lot, and the squirrels would come up if you had nuts. They they were actually a bit too confident, you know. They they come up, you could they take a nut out of your hand, but it's like they have little hands, isn't it? Though, yeah. as well, which is kind of, can be a bit creepy as well, though. They're they're quite dexterous, know. you know. They kind of sit there and they reef open the nut and they go in and they, you know, they throw away what they don't want. <laughs> you know, it's a bit. You can see that any day in Greg's. <laughs> yeah, my local you would see that in our Greg's, but the um, the red squirrel I've never seen out in a park. I've only seen it on programs. Yeah, well, I've only ever seen it back up in Cumbria. I've seen a few, yeah, back so, home, yeah. It's like the grey one. I feel like is the like dirty sort of pigeon. Gre- like, the, like, yeah, the, that's the, how, that's how the, I was. The grey ones they do make cities nicer. They're, they're they're a little bit of character for the cities. But yeah, I, I do think that if we can encourage the reds, the reds are better because the reds are the ones that were here first. Yeah, um, no, no. they were here first. Right? Let's stamp and on they're this kind of cuter. <laughs> they are. They are. Well, I same colour as me. Yeah, so they've, got, they've got fluffy ears. It's wonderful. <laughs> so is she. Uh, <laughs> 
stop sabotaging me when I'm reading. <laughs> Seoul in South Korea is installing 300 new street signs to warn pedestrians about the dangers of walking while engrossed in their smartphones. But not everybody's convinced that they'll be noticed. One sign at a major traffic intersection shows a person staring at a handheld device, oblivious to their imminent collision with a car. While some signs are attached to traffic light poles, others have been plastered onto the pavements in order to attract the lowered gaze of those distracted by their gadgets. Now that makes sense. Everybody's kind of just wandering around with their head down these yeah, days. Yeah, they're not going to see signs of their heads Oh, we've got down. a picture of this as well. Let's oh. have a look. Yeah, no one's going to see that one no. on the phone. Look, they're not going to, it's too high oh, up. It needs goodness. to be on the pavement. What you need, you need some sort of electromagnetic emitter on the, on the signs that just blasts your phone. <laughs> These, these are also the people that bang there. into pedestrians like me who are trying to get from A to B and yeah. they don't know. So if the truck's going to hit them, it's maybe just God's way. These yeah. are the ones, these are the the ones who step out in front of me when I'm cycling along. Oh, they we are. did the way, yeah. yeah, yeah. Call back <laughs> that bit the last time Darwinism we were on the involved in this or something. Possibly it's just a way of thinning out the herd. My you know, goodness if they're just If they can't be able to look up, then, you know... Well, ha- what will be? The will world be. can't be their bodyguard. That's all the time we have for Drew. We leave it on that one. Thanks very much, Mr. Drew Tosh and Mr. Ian Pamson, fabulous guests, and thanks to Growing the City's Clive Hamilton earlier on. Until tomorrow, have a very good evening.